What's on ladies and gentlemen, my name's Ross, I like games, and today we've got another Volk Tour winning deck to look at. My plan here is to make sure we look at all of the decks that win Volk Tours. I will put links to all the other ones we've looked at in the description, and I think there's two more after this that I will do in the coming days and weeks, depends how busy we are really. Now, I've shown you a bunch of games from the Denver Volk Tour. Unfortunately, I was not able to bring you the final of the Denver Volk Tour. My apologies, ladies and gentlemen. But the good news is I can bring you the winning deck. It is Bahamut Alp Larissa Hyfex. Cool. Now, it is a deck with disc logos and shadows. The shadows shouldn't surprise you. It, it shadows, it steals, it's what it does. But we've got essentially here a really harsh shadows suite in terms of stealing. A really disruptive disc suite, a really disruptive disc suite. And then a logo suite which does a bunch of fancy stuff. Cool. Lovely. So let's start off having a look at this, shall we? One of the things that should jump out to you when you look at this deck is that it's got three copies of Control the Week. Control the Week is that lovely action card that gives you an amber bonus, and when you play it, you choose a house on your opponent's identity card, and they are locked in to choosing that house during their next turn. If they've got a bunch of creatures on the board that you don't want them to use next turn, you can lock them into a different house, but as the game wears on, you can see what they've played. You can see what's on the board, what's in their discard pile, etc. You should, after a couple of turns, be able to make a decent prediction as to what's left. You should be able to see which houses have used the most cards. So if you can lock them into using the house that's used the most cards, then you can potentially be in a great situation where they're going to be playing far fewer cards than they want to do because you've locked them into a house where they just don't have the options. Hey, speaking of locking them into playing fewer cards than they would like, the other thing that jumps out to me here is a pair of Ember Imp. Ember Imp says that your opponent cannot play more than two cards each turn. Now, they can use as many cards as they want. But yeah, you, you see where there's a great combo here. Control the weak essentially locks them into a house that has nothing on the board. Ember Imp says they can only play two cards. And here's the thing. There are plenty of cards that can be played from your hand to take out Ember Imp. But a lot of the time, your opponent is just going to destroy it using a creature that's already on board, bearing in mind it doesn't have elusive. If you use Control the Weak here, you can guarantee that your opponent cannot destroy it with something on board, so they've got to play something from their hand, which they're less likely to have. The pair of these together can really lock your opponent out of a whole bunch of stuff. Incidentally, there's also a copy of Arise in here. Choose a house, return each creature of that house from your discard pile to your hand, gaining one chain. You can essentially use this to get both your Ember Imps back at the same time. There are a couple of other really disruptive cards in this here. We've got a copy of Free Fates that destroys the three most powerful creatures on the board. And you know what? Sometimes that's not going to be great. Sometimes that's going to get rid of your own creatures. And if it does, ladies and gentlemen, it does. But there's going to be plenty of times where this can be used just to wreck your opponent's board. And that's going to be kind of funny. There is a Tentacus here which says your opponent must pay you an Amber in order to use one of their artifacts. That's a bit annoying. And there's a copy of Overlord Grecking in here. A card that a lot of people don't, well, don't see very often because it's a rare. But essentially, after an enemy creature is destroyed fighting Overlord Grecking, regardless of who started the fight, you get to put that creature into play under your control. That, that's pretty gosh darn good, ladies and gentlemen. That's pretty gosh darn good. While we're looking at this, there are a few other cards in here. We've got Charette that captures Free Ember, a phenomenal card that a load of people love. Goes really well with the stealing your shadows can do. More on that in a minute. And then two copies of The Terror. If your opponent has no Amber, you gain two. It's not always going to work. 
there are going to be plenty of games where you just cannot play this when your opponent has no amber, and that's going to be sad. But it'll work sometimes. Now, what we're looking for in terms of shadows really is stealing. We want shadows to be able to just come in and steal over and over again to stop our opponent being able to forge a key. And I tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, there's a bunch of stealing here. Now, we have got bait and switch, although do remember the errata now. It can only steal two amber. Still a good card, incidentally, but just not as good. We've got three copies of Relentless Whispers. Relentless Whispers is a great card. Gives you an amber bonus. Deal two damage to a creature. And if it destroys them, steal an amber. There's plenty of good two power creatures out there you can use. Only two copies of Routine Job. You see, Routine Job steals an amber. And then steals another amber for each copy of Routine Job in your discard pile. But only having two of them means you can only ever steal two amber, so it's far from perfect. We've got one copy of Dodger. Now, Dodger isn't perfect because it's got a fight skill that steals an amber, so it's got to survive the fight, and it's got to be down for a turn before you can use it because it comes in exhausted. It's not perfect, but it's all right. And then one copy of Urchin, when you play it, steal an amber. Cool. Not bad at all. And then, of course, we've got a few other good Shadows cards. One of the ones I love here is Lights Out. It fits really well with your Dis Suite and the Disruption in the same way that Charette works really well with all the stealing you can do in Shadows. Lights Out gives you an Amber bonus and returns two enemy creatures to their owner's hand. It's cool. It gets creatures you don't want off the field, especially if they've captured Amber. That's beautiful because it gives you all the Amber right back. We've also got one copy of Bad Penny. When it's destroyed, you return Bad Penny to your hand. Honestly, Bad Penny is way better when you've got something like Seeker Needle. There's nothing really in this deck that can take too much advantage of it. But it's, I mean, it's still going to give you a creature you can keep using. You've got Nexus, which lets you use an opponent's artifact as if it were your own when you reap. Great against people playing the Penth Seed, although, again, it goes into play exhausted, so your opponent can try and take it out before it does too much damage. And one copy of Silvertooth, Silvertooth enters play ready. General rule with Silvertooth is you play it ready, you reap, you get an amber. Your opponent probably takes it out because it's a two-power creature without anything like Elusive, but if they don't, you get some more turns of reaping, and it's a handy bonus. Shouldn't be something you rely on, but it's a nice bonus if you can do more than just reap with it once. And then going into logos, there's no real theme. Like, this is really disruptive, and Shadows is really steely. Incidentally, this deck looks like it's a nightmare to play against. But what you've got is a number of good cards. Cool. Now, there are a few that do jump out. There's two pairs of Rocket Boots. Now, I love Rocket Boots because Rocket Boots lets you do more than you should be able to do. Rocket Boots, this creature gains when you fight or reap. If this is the first time the creature was used this turn, ready it. I know, right? That's cool. That's really cool. It means you get to essentially use a creature twice during a turn. Especially good if you can get it onto a Silver Tooth. But then you'd have to play it. Ah, oh, that combo was almost so gosh darn good. The point I'm making here is that anything you put Rocket Boots on is going to be a target for your opponent. And that's pretty good. I mean, if you can get it on an Overlord Grecking and then start destroying a whole bunch of low power creatures, that could be hilarious. We do see one copy of Wild Wormhole here, which is amazing. Let's you play the top card of your deck regardless of house. That can be good. And there's a copy of Phase Shift here, which lets you play a card from another house. Oh, look! You can use Phase Shift to play Silvertooth and whack a Rocket Boots on. Yeah, I was going somewhere with this. It's not going to happen all the time, but it's a combo that would make me rather happy. Now, we also do see a couple copies of Twin Bolt Emission. It's not a game-winning card, but it does a surprising amount of good. Gives you an Amber Bonus, deals two damage to two different creatures. That could really stack up rather quickly. And then we've got a Neurosiphon. 
gives you an amber bonus, and if your opponent's got more amber than you, you steal one and draw a card. That's kind of cool, ladies and gentlemen. That that's kind of cool. We can make we can make do with that. There's an anomaly exploiter that lets you destroy a damaged creature, which is rather nice. There is a Dexter. When you play it, you capture an amber, and when it's destroyed, you put it on top of your deck. But remember, we're already playing stuff like Charette and all of our shadow stuff, so more capturing is good. Ganymede Archivist, which lets you archive a card when you reap. Archiving is good. It means that you've got a card stashed away that you can guarantee to grab at the beginning of any turn you like. That's nice. And then finally, one copy of Psychic Bug gives you an amber, and it lets you look at your opponent's hand. It's cool. It's fine. I mean, look, it's a two-power creature. It ain't going to last very long. Worst case scenario gives you an amber bonus. Best case scenario, you get to keep looking at your opponent's hand so you've got all the information of what they want to do in the future. That sounds good to me, ladies and gentlemen. That sounds good. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Another Vault Tour winning deck. And once again, the thing I love about doing these videos is when we sit down and look at the Vault Tour winning decks, we can always look at them and go, oh yeah, they're really good decks. Even if they didn't necessarily look like them at first glance, although I contend that most of them generally do, we can sit and look through and we can really see, okay, yeah, I get it, that, that deck's nuts. So, this is the point where I want to know what you think about this deck. So please do let me know in the comment section, go nuts, be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, and follow me on Twitter at the Wossy, where we talk about games, like Keyforge and a whole bunch of others. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wossy Plays.